Alrighty, welcome back everybody. So if you've been following this channel the last couple of weeks, you may have uh, realized I kind of got a little trend going on. I've been replacing a lot of my old tools and I'm gonna keep that trend alive today and we will be replacing this fella. So this is what I've been using in absence of a wooden mallet. Uh, I use it for like straightening twists and all that. It has seen much better days. So it's quite hard to hit things accurately with this thing because it's so curved and you know, it has a tendency to jab you in different areas of your hand and it's, it's just not the most ergonomic of tools. It is undoubtedly the most value I've ever gotten out of a free piece of uh, yard debris, but it's time to lay it to rest. So I have this block of leftover hickory that we can get the mallet head from. Hickory is a really hard and uh, shock resistant wood, so it makes really good handles, which is also why we'll be using it for the handle of this mallet. It's also really heavy. I've actually done some thinking. I don't think this is going to be quite big enough. So, so I'm going to take the mallet head out of the piece that I cut for the handle. So a 10 inch handle is probably fine. So I'm going to cut off 14 inches and I can use the section that I cut off for future uh, single handed tools. All right, let's get to it. Let's do that. Alright, the garage smells like hickory smoked bacon. It's excellent. So these three pieces are ready to go. Got the mallet head and the handle, which I'm going to start shaping in a moment. And I cut this off one of the pieces. It's just a uh, piece with the bark coming through. And I'll be turning this into a wedge when it comes time to assemble everything, so. So I've taken the majority of the material off of the handle with the draw knife, which is incredibly satisfying. The pieces it makes are my favorite part. So now I'm gonna take both the handle and the mallet head um, to the grinder to get them close, fairly close to their final shapes. Then we'll be ready to drill the eye into the mallet. We're getting there. So as I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do this project, I uh, ran into a couple of videos of uh, people doing hidden tenon and mortise joints. It seems to be a somewhat popular way of doing uh, wooden mallets. Um, a traditional tenon and mortise joint is more like this hammer. So in this case, the steel is bored or drifted all the way through. But with this technique, you actually only bore part of the way through the mallet head. Then you set the wedge into the tenon before you drive it into the mallet head. And as you drive it in, the wedge expands the tenon and locks it into the mallet head. And along with some glue, that makes a pretty permanent joint. So I'm going to find the appropriate size drill bit and we can uh, get going. I plan on boring through maybe like two thirds of the mallet head. And then we can narrow the end of the handle until it fits properly into the hole. All right, so the spade bit's not a fan of the drill press at all. So we will be using the hand drill.
Okay, so I let the glue sit up overnight and picked it up this morning and immediately wanted to hit something with it. And I'll get around to that. Unfortunately, we do have some splitting on the handle. I did notice some splitting while I was applying the glue and kind of tried to add some extra glue to those areas, but it looks like it kind of just got more extreme overnight. I keep thinking of things I'd want to do differently, which is why I'm going to do a second one. This thing feels like a tank, so I'm assuming it'll probably put up with some abuse before it uh, meets its untimely demise. I do got to keep in mind that this tool's role is to hit something that's over 1800 degrees. So it's, you know, it's, it's a uh, sacrificial tool in the long run. That said, I do think I'll be able to make a nicer one in less time than it took to make this one because I'll have a lot less learning shenanigans to go through. So let's get to it. So the last time you saw me at the drill press, I was about to make a horrible mistake. So unless you have a uh, vise on your drill press or a milling machine, don't use spade bits. So this time the difference is I squared up this block really good so that I can use a drill press to drill a very straight pilot hole smaller than the width of the screw portion on the spade bit. The last one I didn't bore the hole all that straight because uh, I was coming at it with the angle and the vise and the vise isn't square with anything and and the mallet head wasn't square with anything. So yeah, we're learning. So to prevent the splitting like we have on this mallet, I'm going to be drilling a hole at the base where I want the uh, split for the wedge to end. And the idea is as the wedge pushes the two pieces apart, it should uh, divvy out the pressure so it's not all going into one spot like it was on the last one. Go. It's kind of counterintuitively the glue kind of acts as a lubricant until it starts getting tacky. Let's give it a go. This mallet works.
guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Unfortunately, these are tools that are meant to pretty much work until they die and you make another one. So, so this is the nicest they'll look. So say goodbye. But we got two, so I won't need to think about that for a while. Assuming that this guy's handle holds up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Drop a like, all that good jazz. All right, thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you guys in the next one.